it leaves ripple effects of self-abandonment and you really have to learn how to be safe in your body again you have to teach yourself that Hey you, hola, wagwan, deep and deep. Hello beautiful beings. If this is your first time, welcome to the inner verses. And if you're already part of the tribe, hi, always, always so good connecting with you and seeing you. I say seeing you, it's more you seeing me, but I'm seeing you energetically, we're here. We're right here, so we are actually really seeing each other. Thank you so much for not only showing up every single time we gather. I don't really call them like episodes, I call them gatherings, because we are gatherings, gatherings of the minds, of the spirits, and of the soul. So I really, really appreciate you. And if you would like to be part of the tribe and it's just the first time here, join the tribe. We have fun here. We're all about inner child healing connecting to our higher consciousness, higher vibration, spiritual empowerment, empowerment for your mind, body, spirit. That's what we do for the tribe. We are learning and unlearning characteristics and traits that got in the way and have been getting in the way of us really loving ourselves and prioritizing the relationship with ourselves. So why would you not be one part of that? Join, come on, do it. And speaking of the tribe, I'm Patience. I'm a spiritual teacher. I'm an internal student, spiritual life life coach, mindfulness guide, and psychic medium, so many things and so many ways I express my passion and my purpose, which is helping people be at the center of the universe and loving themselves. Get ready to snuggle up because you belong here in this cozy corner of the universe. Today is a trigger warning. So I'm just gonna trigger, 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 trigger. Triggers have been raised. Today's a gathering, we're diving into healing your inner child and some of the ways, in particular four ways that if you've been through trauma, sexual trauma, physical, any type of abuse, how that experience impacts your self-worth or how it would have impacted your self-worth. Before we do, I really, really, really appreciate you. However you're listening to this, watching this, wherever, whenever, I really appreciate you in liking, subscribing, leaving a review if you find this of value, sharing it as well with people around you, saying, drop it in the group chats, share it with your loved ones or your colleagues, people that you feel actually they could find value in so in the messages of this. And if you're going through abuse right now or you've been through abuse right now, please know that you're not alone because oh, so have I. You know, so many people have, which is horrible. Like it breaks my heart every single time I speak to someone and I know they've been through this experience. Nine, over 95, close, maybe really, like 99% of the people I've spoken to ever had some level of sexual abuse when they were children or even some sexual assault, some form of violation throughout their life and multiple times at that. So know that you are not alone. As I'm going through some of the things um, that do impact your self-worth, please view it and perceive it and allow yourself, give yourself permission to take in the information, take it on, but without judging yourself, not from a place of judgment, but from a place of forgiveness, from a place of understanding and being curious of yourself and if things resonate absolutely be even further curious into why are they resonating so I just wanted to put a disclaimer onto that because you know as part of having going through sexual trauma and it's going to be actually one of the things we'll talk about it it's that level of judgment and that shame that you place onto yourself the blame that you place onto yourself so as I'm going through this I'm not blaming you I'm not blaming myself I'm not blaming anyone but this is just about ways that the experiences that we've gone through diminish have diminished and may and have may continue to diminish your self-worth and how do you reclaim that how do you reclaim that part of yourself that is locked away and also I've been talking a little bit about the main reason why a lot of people a lot of survivors and a lot of sexual trauma and even abuse within itself survivors they don't speak they don't speak up about it we'll be diving into that because as we're going through this is what we're going to be healing our throat chakra because when you talk about your experiences as gut-wrenching as they may be as scary as they may be when you speak about it you actually are 
reclaiming your power, you're reclaiming parts of yourself, you're reclaiming you, you are experiencing growth and you're so, so deserving to reclaim that power that you may not have felt for many, many times and many, many years. Okay, okay so let's get into number one. Number one, self-abandonment. Self-abandonment is when you sacrifice yourself and what's good for you in order to do something and get it done for somebody else. And in sexual trauma, especially if you've experienced it like I have, so I'll be, I was molested when I was from the age of three to 10 by family members, multiple family members, and also in my adulthood, I've also gone through sexual assault and violations, again, family members who are not in my life. So none of those people are in my life. We had to cut that out straight away. And when you go through such an experience and your body is violated, you actually abandon your body. So I went into freeze mode where I just was like, my body just went shut down and it was just protecting me, which for the predator, it can give off the impression, well, they're, they're manipulated right away. And they can give it the impression of like, oh yeah, like, you know, I'm, I am giving consent. There was no consent. My body is just in, it's gone into a state of freeze and actually blacking out because I've experienced that I've blacked out and I'm in and out of consciousness. That's your body protecting you. And also because you're blacking in and out or also because you might totally go somewhere else, your body is there, but your consciousness is not. There's a level of self abandonment because you are actually splitting. There's a split between your body and your consciousness. And when you leave your body and you are doing that to keep yourself safe, you're protecting your body and your body will do it automatically. That reaction can leave ripples of self-abandonment as a core belief, as a running record that is playing like behind all the reactions behind your life that is essentially controlling life without you necessarily being aware of it and so you really have to learn and teach yourself how to feel safe in your body as i say that like i just got tingles all over my body because i'm still learning that for me and when you know something to be true and you dismiss it or you deny it, diminish it not only are you denying yourself but you then deny your worth which means you don't then don't have a healthy sense of worth and you don't believe that you can do it so you sacrifice yourself on what's good for you in order to please somebody else and this is a secret belief that is running in the back of your mind based on the experience that you would have had so when you when you experience that split and your body your consciousness has essentially left your body and your body is keeping you safe by either you're in that freeze mode or you might fight it like however your body reacts what happens a lot of the times is especially if you go into freeze mode is it leaves ripple effects of self-abandonment and you really have to learn how to be safe in your body again you have to teach yourself that and even if you fought also have to learn how to be safe in your body and if you flee there's a ripple effect that is self-abandonment and when you don't acknowledge that and when you don't feel safe in your body it really encourages and pushes the belief the core belief in the back of your mind of it's okay to abandon myself it's okay to deny or diminish my needs for the sake of pleasing somebody else it diminishes your worth and you may experience not actually having a healthy sense of worth that that was tr so true for me having experienced it for so many years in my life i did not feel that i was worthy of in my body i was worthy of feeling safe in my body i was worthy of being heard and speaking up so many things that you would have experienced not only in that moment even prior to the moment and even after the moment and all create running core beliefs that are attached to how you identify with your worth. And even if you're aware of how you identify with your worth, because that's also another thing, is the awareness of like, wait, do I even know what my worth is? Do I even feel my worth? Do I even know anything about worthiness in regards to me? Yeah, 
it's a biggie and it's one that has taken me a few that's taken me years and I still continue working on my self-worth till this day and being aware of it because your worth is all about what you require what you request what you expect from other people and how you hold space for yourself that all starts within you and so when you are looking around and you're seeing actually why am I repeating the patterns why am I in a constant cycle of feeling abandoned or feeling rejected or feeling essentially the same although different people and different experiences the same emotions that you would have felt when that experience happened why do am I still feeling it now 10 20 years later is because the record is still playing and you are essentially continuing in that cycle when you're continue attracting situations of that cycle it's not your fault that the experience happened to you it's not fair there's no blame to be had at all there's no blame to be had when it comes to you but we're talking about how you would have been and how you are and may still be how I was and sometimes still are coping in a manner that is rooted in unhealthy core beliefs in beliefs that actually I am diminishing my own work and I'm continue reliving the experience and punishing myself through different experiences but the root and the core of it is is then is when I was being I was going through I was being abused and I was going through that situation so it's really really important to understand first the reaction that you would have had instantly and also just understanding that you may have those ripples of abandonment and especially self abandonment and the good thing thing about it is you can heal from it you know even you're watching this video that is testament to you wanting to do better for yourself you wanting to learn and unlearn and heal from that which is great because when you know something to be true this is another way that um, we experience self-abandonment or we abandon ourselves is when you know something to be true and you dismiss it or you deny it and you diminish it that does nothing for increasing your self-worth if anything you are just shoving your worth like into the pits of the bin and into pits of the trash and when you are in that place it's so easy because you are so used to it and that's what you are expecting of yourself and for other people you sacrifice yourself people pleaser recovering people pleaser alert over here you sacrifice yourself for what's good for you what you know to be good for you for someone else to please someone else and it's a secret silence it's a secret belief that you are not worthy that you're not deserving of pleasing you of doing what is rightfully what you want to do and also not doing what you don't want to do so that's self-abandonment i know we unpicked a lot of different layers um if you want to learn a little bit more let me know in the comments before i just thought i would break that down before we move on to the second thing which is fear so a lot of the times if not probably number one right there at the top why a lot of people that have gone through any type of abuse sexual trauma why they don't speak up as soon as it happens why they never maybe even like speak up is because the fear of not being believed they may have spoken up right after and someone didn't believe them i've experienced this myself when i was younger when i was five that in the middle of like going through it i was told that oh no it's something that you know women we have to keep to ourselves and i now understand the person was doing it well meaningly to protect me and they went behind the scenes and they handled the situation but that was never communicated to me and so that allowed that to just carry on and so the fear then of like oh okay so what i have to say doesn't really matter I have to keep these things in because I'm a woman and those things that we hold on to yourselves especially at five years old like the first 10 years of our life are so 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 crucial because the world is really about us like I don't know if you've got children if you've got nieces and nephews until they're maybe like 10 11 that's when they're like oh wait the world does not actually really revolve around me oh there's other people in the world oh okay and rightfully so because they're you're in that bubble where you're you are your world 
and everybody else is in your world and so with that it means as children we take on a lot of the things that are not even ours we blame ourselves for a lot of things that are not ours and then when you experience such trauma you just take that on to you i blamed myself i felt shame about it which i will address so many feelings and so many things that you attach onto yourself as a child because you are just seeing it through oh if i didn't do this then this will never happen oh this happened because i did this that's the cycle that you are always operating in and so which is why it's really really important to now when you're in a space in a safer space in a more capacitated in a more um mature space to look back and connect with your inner child and do more of that work and understanding oh okay what's mine and what wasn't mine because a lot of these things and especially even having gone through this and if you're going through this still it's not for you to hold a lot of it is not for you you know and especially when you are violated and like let's say there's actually like penetration and physical that is also an energetic infusion into you so you're holding that within your body we hold we hold trauma in our bodies when we don't let it out and that can manifest and infuse itself into illness that can manifest into allergies and tolerances even as extreme as cancer that can manifest into depression like in my our body doesn't know how to process it because we're not allowing it to leave and move out that our bodies are like, oh okay i'll store it here so your body and your mind are always working in a way to protect you and always working in a way to do what's best for you that isn't always the best for you long term so it works for that moment but then when your body is no longer knows it's stored it for so long and it doesn't know what else to do with it that is just going to keep eating and eating and eating and eating and eating at you so fear of not being believed not being heard the consequences as well of what can happen if you speak about this like for me again one of the things that was said to me was you know if you speak up your mum and dad are really gonna like they'll lose their minds they might go in jail i'll get into trouble i'll do all of this and so the fear again of the consequences of oh my god and even more so the consequences of okay this is going to change the family dynamics this is going to change the relationships not only the relationship with me and these and these people but also relationships with everybody else around us like what our christmas dinner is going to look like what our gathering is going to look like okay like what so many thoughts and feelings that are going through and this is and i'm saying it like this because this is all sometimes the speed that is going through sometimes even quicker you're just then like blah, 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 blah. you get into full-on overthinking mode but it's not overthinking in um in in a way it is and it's not at the same time it is in the sense of like you are thinking of all the different consequences and your mind is just like oh my god okay no let's just it's too much there's too many consequences there's just too much the fear of it i just can't i can't handle all of it i just can't and it's not overthinking in a way because all of those are possibilities right so you are in a way like justified and it's okay to think of all the different scenarios but what's not okay is to put that on yourself and for that fear to kind of going back to self-abandonment for the fear to manifest itself as in you pleasing other people and diminishing you And that goes nicely into the next part, which is loyalty and protection of other people. When you are protecting other people, but you're the one feeling the pain and the hurt, that does nothing. And I know that absolutely is like gut-wrenching to your self-worth. That is digging your self-worth into like, going into like the minus thousands of the degrees of coldness. Put in, just put it in the freezer, why don't you? Because, but that is so also a very common thing like again all these things i've been through it i'll go through it because especially when this happened when you were younger you are so loyal and you are conditioned to be loyal to your family you're conditioned to be loyal to traditions to cultures and so if this is a family member or someone that you know you do innately have a loyalty to them you know there's a relationship there and so even if they have violated you and they've done 
something to you that you don't like, that you know is wrong, the loyalty and the pleasing of them supersedes the wrongness and your feelings and your experience. And you continue protecting, not only you might protect them alone, but it can extend, and for me, it absolutely did, extend it to protecting my mum and dad, protecting my siblings, because so I'm like, oh God, if they, if I tell them someone's ending up in jail, if I tell them someone's all of this and actually if that happened good in one way good yeah because I would have absolutely felt protected I'd absolutely felt like someone's in my corner fighting for me and also if that happened the extreme happened it would not have been my fault it would not have been my problem because each person is entitled and has the responsibility of how they act they have the choice of how they act and how they react which is so 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 key and so important and I feel like something that took me a while to learn and breaking this loyalty the shackles of loyalty the shackles of like protecting other people is everyone has a choice in how they react and right now my loyalty and it's okay for me to be loyal to myself and it's okay for me to choose my own loyalty and to choose to speak and say hey this is what happened now how you react and how you respond to that that's then your choice but I'm choosing to be loyal to me and I'm choosing in my loyalty to myself is acknowledging my experience, is acknowledging what happened, is acknowledging my truth and speaking up my truth, right? I know it feels, it can feel very uncomfortable and it is uncomfortable, but it's even more uncomfortable living and denying your truth and living in the shadows and the guilt in the locker that I was living in also I can protect the predators and other people in my family. It just doesn't work and it didn't work. The math just does not math. So absolutely protect you. You are worthy of being protected. It may not happen then and it may still even not be happening necessarily now if you're still going through that experience. But right now in this moment, you are deserving of being protected. You can change that, you can switch it up and that starts with you. It's okay to protect yourself. It's okay to choose you regardless of the consequence because the consequences are greater when you are not protecting you, when you are not acknowledging you and speaking your truth and, and being there for you. So this is your permission, if you needed to hear it, that you matter and it's worthy of protecting you. And by doing so, you remove the shame, which is the final bit of, and it's the final reason why sometimes people don't speak up about any of their abuse or any of their experiences, is the shame that is attached to that. And that shame can look like reliving it and feeling the flashbacks and feeling it in your body, in your mind, the disgustedness that you might feel, the anger, the rage, the sorrow, the sadness, the confusion, all the different spectrums, all of that. You don't want to be reliving that. No one wants to and having those flashbacks, that's already like a PTSD element that comes with it. But the shame element, which as survivors sometimes, and when, especially when you're still processing what happened and you're still are uh, trying to understand for yourself what that looks like for you, is you can put the blame and the shame on yourself. Shame about speaking up because you're feeling a bit like, ugh, I can't believe that happened to me. That's a level of shame. You're internalizing the shame, which is not for you to hold at all. And it could have been placed on you by the per the people and the person that did it, by also society. So there's that shame of like, if it's happened, if you've been abused, if you've been violated, uh, how could you let that have happened? How And all the questions and all the questions that go back to the self-abandonment and the fear of not being believed and the fear of having to justify yourself and having to prove yourself. You don't have to do any of that. The shame is not for you to hold. It's for them, that person, those people. It's not for you to internalize. You did nothing wrong. You are not wrong and you are worthy of removing those shackles, of removing any guilt. You are worthy. You were not dressed a certain way so you invited that no you were not too friendly so that's the reason no none of the reason justifies anyone ever violating you anyone ever putting their hands 
on you, anyone ever manipulating you, mind and even body, you are not deserving of any of that. It's not right, it's not fair and it's not for you. It's not your fault. Please hear me loud and clear, it is not your fault. And it's okay and it's safe to release that now. Release the shame, release the guilt. Give it back to the predators. Give it back to anyone that doubted you, anyone that made you feel anyhow, give it back to them. It's not for you. Remove the baggage, let go of that. You already got too many luggages, you know, of other things that you're carrying on that one, the baggage, no, put it in the bin. So I know those four things are a lot of self-abandonment, fear, loyalty, and shame. And they do take a while and they can you know what they can actually take as long as you are wanting them to take and they can take a lifetime because there's layers and layers and layers to it but when you get to the core the subconscious beliefs it's a lot easier to then nip it in the bud when you see the fears popping up the fears of the consequences the shame popping up the patterns and the urges wanting to abandon yourself all those things you can then relate it back to the core belief whether it's I am not worthy, I'm not enough, I deserve to be violated, all those core running beliefs, I don't matter, I'm not seen, I'm not heard. When you understand what your core beliefs are that have been in your subconscious, it's a lot easier to nip in the bud any experiences and, it's like, and you also change the trajectory of any people that are in your life. You cut them out, you bring new people in that actually are supportive to to your healing and who you are and who you've always and desired to be and who you've always really been when you um, let go of all of the baggage that you may have been holding on to, which has never been yours for you to hold on to. And all of that is, again, it supports you in acknowledging yourself, in, in owning you, in owning your experience and living in your truth. And that increases your self-worth. And so it's okay to speak about it. And if you're not ready to speak about it, that's also okay. Speaking about it doesn't necessarily always have to look like you are talking to someone. That can look like writing down your thoughts. That can look like recording voice recording your experience or voice recording what's coming up for you so I encourage you as part of this as well you know, after we've gone through all of that I encourage you to write down what's coming up for you to record it whether that's on video that's on voice notes and if you want support I'm here that's what I do I love I specialize in the child healing work because that was the biggest breakthrough for me that's what's got me to here to be able to hold in that space for people so I'm more than happy to do that for you can get in touch with me via the website www.theinnerverses.co.uk on all social media is at the inner verses but also speak to people that you feel that they will hold space for you whether that is family whether that is friends seek support there are other therapists or or have multiple going on at the same time make music do so there's so many different activities that you can do as a way of you starting to release the baggage starting to let go of and it, even simply as speaking up about your experiences and acknowledging and putting light to them because they had been in the shadows for so many 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 years and many times and we're cutting that putting a stop to that no more of that you don't deserve that i've never deserved that and this is a time for you if you feel ready if you choose to and whenever you feel ready if never you feel ready that's also okay you do this on your own terms you get to choose now what works for you you get to choose now what protecting you looks and feels like you get to choose now what worthiness feels like how to reclaim back your power you get to choose and you are worthy of choosing you. You're worthy of seeing you. You're worthy of hearing you. You're worthy of knowing and believing and understanding to your core that you matter. You matter. Are you hearing me? You matter just simply because of who you are. Just you as an entire being. You matter. You've always, always mattered. And you've always been deserving of being heard. You've always deserved, deserved of being seen. And I'm so, so sorry that you never received that. And I'm so, so sorry that you didn't receive enough of that. And I'm so, so sorry that if you received too much of that because that's trauma. Trauma is receiving not enough, none at all, or too much. And I'm sorry for the experience that you've gone through 
through and that you are also going through if you are going through right now. It's a lifelong journey and it doesn't rub it away, but the charge by acknowledging this and starting to unpack your experiences, it allows the wounds to start healing and not to continuously be chipped at. It allows you to be living in less pain mentally emotionally and physically so i hope that was useful and i do have a tapping exercise that i would love to invite you to join me on it's only gonna be two minutes and this is something you can use anytime you feel overwhelmed to just calm down your nervous system and to start feeling safe in your body there is a longer tapping eft which is emotional freedom technique meditation i'll put somewhere here where you can go ahead and have the full uh, it's about 20 minutes the full meditation but this will just be two minutes so I'm just going to ask you to um, follow my lead and you can use whichever hand you want. So we're going to start with a karate chop and I'm going to ask you to repeat after me with the words that I'm saying. Okay, so starting with chopping off your right or left hand, whichever, whichever feels most comfortable and just repeating after me. Although I experienced the trauma that I did, and then top of your eyebrow. And I didn't feel safe to speak about it. And side of your eye. Or even when I spoke about it, I didn't feel heard. I didn't feel seen or believed. And then underneath your eye. And when I spoke, I may have been shut down. And underneath your nose. And although I may be Reliving that experience and in your chin, reliving that experience knowingly and unknowingly. And onto your shoulders. And the charge, it feels like it literally keeps happening every day. And underneath your armpit. All those feelings or all those emotions, the guilt, the shame, the fear of the consequences, the hurt, the pain, the rage. is justified in me feeling that way. And I'm giving myself permission to honor how I feel, honor my experience. I am willing to allow myself to not feel disgusted, to not feel disgusting within myself. I am willing to allow myself to free myself from the shackles of the pain. I am willing to allow myself to feel okay. I am willing to allow myself to feel safe, to create a safe space for me in my body, in my mind, in my spirit. I am safe. I am no longer in that situation anymore. I am free, I am safe, I am protected. I am willing to allow to protect myself. I am willing to allow myself to choose myself. I am willing to put myself first and choose what I want, choose what I deserve. I am willing to feel enough. I am enough. I have always been enough. I've always been worthy. What I went through does not diminish my worth. I will no longer allow it to diminish my worth, my value. I matter. I am willing to believe that I am enough. I am willing to see me, to hear me, to love me. To be in the courage of being me, to courageously choose myself. I am enough. I am heard, I am loved, I am protected by me first and foremost. Okay, and just 
shake off that energy i hope that was useful and if you resonate with that please please let me know in the comments and if you found that valuable please leave a review let me know i'd love to know what you also what resonated with you what you really felt connected to if there's anything else that you learned if anything else that you also want to see please let me know in the comments email me on the website on the socials the dms are open but i hope that you felt seen and you feel seen, you feel heard, you feel loved. You're not alone. You're not alone. You don't have to be alone. We are in this together. And there's so many people that are rooting for you, that are fighting for you energetically. You are whole, you are healing. And I'm so, so, so proud of us. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of me. I'm so proud of what we are doing. All of that to say, I hope you continue on this path, continue choosing yourself, continue loving on you, continue doing everything on your own terms in the healthy and best ways, continue choosing to do it differently and healing and letting go of the baggage that is not yours. And until next time, my love, sending you loads of love, place of healing, loads of peace, uplifting you in the highest vibrations. Loads of love.